and welcome to the third season of Triton TV News and this season we are naming the COVID-19 season because of the historic place in time we find ourselves. We are all impacted and you will see we are socially distanced this season. I'm your host Frankie Lynn Hill and I'm Igor Toyama. On today's episode we'll get some insights on guidelines for COVID-19 following the latest scoop with the uprising UOG esports community. Topping it all off with how people from all parts of the world eating habits have changed. Before we get into our feature stories, let's check on Anissa Sanchez, a person who started creating short creative clips on a social media platform called TikTok. With COVID-19 continuing to spread throughout the island, many have faced the dilemma of keeping themselves entertained while staying at home and out of harm's way. One solution is by finding creative ideas and posting it on social media. I started making content in t October 2019 because I just saw other TikTok creators looking like they were having fun just being themselves and sharing it with the world, so I felt inspired to do the same. A TikToker like Anissa Sanchez creates small creative clips on a social media platform called TikTok. With the goal to inspire others and to show who she is as a person, Anissa faced some challenges of having to create content by constantly having to think of new ideas with the amount of free time given during this pandemic. The way I had to adjust making my content during this quarantine was just taking it easy, don't rush myself, go at my own pace, just relax and just simply enjoy watching other people create content. Even with the Nissa's current struggle, she still continues to create content on TikTok in hopes to bring spells to her followers and potentially gain a larger audience, with the thought that she too can inspire others to do the same. Thank you, Ingrid. For our first story, we'll be diving into COVID-19 and how the people of Guam are adapting to recent changes and what protocols Guam should follow. Guam residents have been placed in self-quarantine for the past month. The number of infected cases of coronavirus peaked at 138 during the first four weeks of quarantine and slowly remains at 154. Residents have had to adapt to social distancing and follow sanitary guidelines to keep them safe. Triton TV News reporter Drake Titano explores how locals are coping with this new reality. Guam Community College sophomore and Manila resident Savannah Baza follows a strict protocol when her family returns from the grocery store. So when we come back, immediately we take off everything. Like I said, the Clorox wipes is ready there by the door. We sanitize our phones, uh, purses, wallets, anything we could have touched, even car keys. Immediately wash our hands. Till we don't even sit down anywhere until we go back and take a shower. And then we can relax fully. According to Baza, after the pandemic, she sees herself incorporating daily sanitation into her everyday life. While sanitation is important, health experts recommend at least 150 minutes of physical activity to remain healthy during the quarantine. Jared Castro, a senior at the University of Guam, shares how he has adjusted to the home workouts. Kind of going into the whole fitness thing or like how I'm staying active, I try to work out at least six days a week now. I really don't have an excuse. I used to be someone that would just be like three to four days and because I had school and I had work and I could really say that with a bold statement because I didn't have time to go to the gym. But now I work at home or I do a neighborhood run and I'm just very vigilant that there's like a dog around me. While some are adjusting to the lack of fitness facilities, others have been affected financially with the shutdown of non-essential services. Like Asantos, a full-time dental assistant provides for hand experience. A lot of the businesses in Guam have closed down and well I did work for a couple more weeks after the lockdown but you know eventually my boss had to close down the clinic because you know we're actually at high risk dental clinics anyone who works in the dental field would know that we're the highest we have the highest risk of getting infected because we directly work in the mouth. Self-quarantine has been in place since March 16th and residents are very cautious when leaving their homes. Cameron Wolf, a new mother, expresses her concerns on the pandemic. If you feel fine, assume that you're not because the asymptomatic period is very long, it's unusually long. Um, so even if you feel fine, you might not be fine. So treat everybody and yourself as if you were sick. As an infectious disease continues to spread, it's not only beneficial for you to take the extra mile, but it's beneficial for your family and for the island. Great tight to know, Tyson TV News. 
Thank you, Drake. For more information on how you can stay safe, you can follow all local news networks or listen to KUEM at 6 p.m. local time. Most of all, stay home and stay safe. Later, we'll talk about an uprising East Bork City coming this summer at the University of Guam and Guam Department of Education. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back Triton TV News. For those just tuning in, we talked about conflicts content creators face and how locals are adapting to COVID-19. On island with traditional sports lockdown, there's buzz about an esports league. Guam Department of Education and the University of Guam are putting in the effort to make this all happen. Triton TV News reporter Jacques Masunkai explores what's up. Esports on Guam has always been somewhat of a niche community. The idea of their hobby being accepted as a sport has been a long-term dream for many gamers on island. Esports League is all about teams competing against each other in games such as Smash Bros, League of Legends, Dota 2, and many others. However, as a niche community, there hasn't been an established team format. Lighty Esports owner Ken San Nicholas is hopeful that esports on island becomes more common. The point of Lighty Esports in the beginning was to was twofold. It was to bring better players here, as well as nurture and facilitate the growth of competition here locally by hosting, you know, uh, consistent amounts of tournaments, right? And we did that all of last year. San Nicholas is hosting the Esports League for high school, starting off with a game of Smash Bros. The league will compete head-to-head -head against other high schools to find out who is worthy of becoming champions. And San Nicholas has also started an Esports for the University of Guam. So right now, actually, I believe University of Guam is trying to field two League of Legends teams for an ongoing ongoing League of Legends um, season that we're going to have this summer, and it actually begins next week. The Triton Esports Committee is the University of Guam's answer to the many organizations and teams competing on island. Triton Esports Administrator John Wigglesworth looks forward to what the future has in store. So with Triton Esports specifically, the athletes the UOG will be working and, and growing and creating in this program will have opportunities to hone their skills and play competitively, not just locally here on island, but even nationally and internationally. Currently, esports on island is still fresh off the boat with both sides starting off small. I'm looking to build this with, you know, four or five people that I trust. Uh, I have people helping me with the GDOE thing, and it's all pro bono, no money involved, like, you know, just doing it out for the doing it for the love of esports and for building the, that kind of community. Personally, I see it as having a big future on Guam. It's something that hasn't really happened here before, but I know that there's a huge community for it. Not only because I'm personally part of that community, but also because I've seen it. I've seen the interest, and I've seen that the people are there. They just want to come together and play. The thought of esports can be exciting. Yet, not everyone has the motivation to compete. Guam resident and League of Legends player Jonathan Dunna feels the same way. Casual gamer and then there's a competitive gamer. Two different, totally different things, right? If you want to be a competitive gamer, that's the first step. You have to recognize that. And then secondly, like, in order to pursue this com world of competitive gaming, you have to always want to improve yourself as a player. And 96% of our respondents supported the creation of the official Triton Esports. While 30% said that they probably wouldn't play, but they would come out to watch the matches. And 28% said they wanted to par be part of the teams and compete. My whole pitch, if I could have it my way, would be that you would add an Esports every quarter. 
So just like you have you, you have soccer first quarter, you have fo- or football first quarter, soccer second quarter, volleyball third quarter. You would have like sm- Smash first quarter, League of Legends second quarter, Rocket League third quarter, you know, something else fourth quarter. Once classes are over, students will spend their summer practicing and attending these tournaments to have fun competing against other students. Jock Masunkai, Triton TV News. Thank you, Jock. Many people are finding comfort in staying home during quarantine. With constant access to food, residents may find themselves binging on junk food in what is now dubbed as the Quarantine 15 Diet. Triton TV News reporter Drake Titano explores how residents are coping with their new eating habits. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused residents to adjust their diets to minimize unhealthy eating. Guam resident Christy Stokes shares how her diet has changed since the quarantine started. I'm more aware of what I'm eating. Before, I just kind of ate whatever came to me or whatever I could see, but now I'm more aware of what I'm eating and I don't eat out as much. But then I also, because there's nothing to do, there's a lot of snacking that's involved. Health experts recommend eating fresh fruits and vegetables as an alternative to snacking. Ayana Shedd, a resident of Huntington Beach in California, is all too familiar with healthy eating, but has faced a new problem. I wouldn't say that my diet changed a lot. I've been cooking at home, and that hasn't really changed since the quarantine. But having supplies that I need to cook the things that I want is definitely what's impacted my diet. According to Ayana, Trips to grocery stores have become less fruitless, which causes her to set up for more snack foods. As the coronavirus continues to affect eating habits in America, it may be similar in other countries too. We asked Mike Uggen, UOG alumni and ESL teacher in South Korea, how he finds comfort in takeout foods and eating at home. I do cook a lot more than before. Uh, I maybe like once or twice a week I would go out to eat, but I've been going to the grocery store actually buying the ingredients and maybe asking mom about her recipe or two, right? So I've been cooking a lot at uh, my apartment. While healthy home-cooked meals are preferred during this pandemic, residents may still find themselves snacking on unhealthy foods from time to time. One method is to be aware of your snacking behavior and adjust your shopping list accordingly. I'm more aware, so when I do start eating junk food, I'll stop it and then start like eating more healthy food. And then when I go out, to go shopping, then I try to replace that. So I'm trying to kind of replace the bad habits. Having awareness towards your snacking behavior can significantly reduce unhealthy eating habits. As the quarantine is still in effect, be sure to incorporate exercising and healthier snacks to your daily routine. Drake Titano, Triton TV News. Thank you, Drake. And thank you everyone for tuning in to this episode of Triton TV News. I'm Frankie Lynn Hill. And I'm Miguel Toyama. And we hope hope to to see see you soon. soon.